Even when you feel low, you can still go Even when you feel slow, you can still go Even when there's no hope, you can still go I never answer to no man, I still go Go, go What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's Pastor Keenan, and we are back with another episode of People Suck, Love Them Anyways. And I can tell you what, man, we are just, uh, man, I, we, we feel the love uh, so far this year. Thankful to everybody that's, uh, you know, hit that download button. And, uh, you know, uh, I think we've added another couple of states on uh, to our list over the last couple of weeks and a couple of more countries as well. So you guys continue to hit that download button and continue to tell your friends about People Suck, Love Them Anyways, where, you know, you know, we just take uh, normal, everyday people, man, and we plug this situation in and just talk about real life stuff, put some Bible spin on it as well, and talk about, you know, just the faith side of it as well. So, you know, just a lot of different things going on. Uh, you know, shout out to the people that just passed by an ambulance. We're going to pray for them. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, Nick, man, sidekick Nick, how are we doing tonight? Oh, pretty good, pretty good. Good, I'm brother. Enjoying life, you know. Oh, absolutely, man. You know, even with my nose stuffy, man, I feel like I still have a little more energy than you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably a little bit, but then again, <laughs> you are drinking <clears throat> isogenics. So. Hey, man, name drop. If you need some, let me know. Uh, neighborhood plug. Anyways, um, tonight we're going to talk about a topic called Guard Your Temple. Guard your temple. And and we're talking about your temple as far as your body, your mind, your heart, everything that goes into it. And we're coming from two sides tonight. We're going to come from the physical aspect, which is the normal, everyday walk. And we're also going to come, and again, like we say, we're going to put that... Uh, biblical spin on it as well because it's important not only to guard your uh you know your body health wise on the outside but you know what you got to take care of your stuff on the inside as well and tonight joining us uh is our good friend alex Doan. alex how you doing buddy doing great glad to be here all right so even he's got a little more intensity than you nick what's up bro i'm just gonna blame it on genetics at this point. Like, I, I, don't, I don't even know what to do you know oh i love it so <laughs> i'm just gonna much, walk in man. here and just it's amazing everything is great <laughs> absolutely the walls are white yeah. welcome home sign is here the pews are great they're all in line you know yeah absolutely You're gonna think man. i'm on crack no oh, it's fine now the listeners will be like what has happened to nick in the right. last week or so but uh, we got Alex Doan on with us tonight. Uh, Alex is also an entrepreneur himself. Uh, you know, he owns his own heating and air business. Uh, but not only that, uh, he decided to start taking his his health very serious. Alex, how many years ago, man? Um, I, I think it's been like four. Four or five years ago, something years like ago. that. Yeah. So, and, and I've kind of been around to see Alex's transition uh, as well over the last four or five years and kind of see how he stepped back uh, from a lot of different areas of his life and, you know, just talk about like, you know, just some things he went through and things like that, some bad choices that he had made as far as, you know, just taking care of his temple, his body himself. And, you know, now four years later, I mean, uh, you know, it's crazy to see the before and after pictures to see how uh, you, you don't even look like the same person, dude. Uh, yeah. You know, it's pretty crazy yep. to see the difference, man. And, uh, you know, what what really drove you, uh, first and foremost, what really drove you just to kind of start taking that, you know, taking that ride to say, I'm going to I'm going to create a better me. Uh, I guess I just didn't want to like as I was getting older, I didn't want to just keep getting bigger and unhealthier. Right. So uh, and I wanted I started out with like just muscle. I just wanted to build muscle. Yeah. But, did you did you like I mean was was you like aching? Was you out of breath? Was you like could you not sleep at night? I mean what what like what was really going through your mind or what what was really going through your body? You know as well. I mean I could tell I was getting out of shape, like getting winded easy and stuff. Um, I bet you weren't going in crawl spaces, was you? Well, yeah. <laughs> See, that's not, a jo- not as laugh, easy. Nick, not laugh. Easy. That's a joke, bro. Come on, like you can't put a big guy in a crawl space. <laughs> See, but then I'll get caught a fat chamber. Oh God, <laughs> pray for me then. I guess. I guess I can shame him because I've known him for forever. But nonetheless, but yeah. So you weren't going in crawl spaces, right? Not I mean, a, not as easy. No, absolutely. So you know, I mean, motivation for your job, but you know, motivation for your family as well, right? I mean, like you know. I had somebody ask me the question one time of, hey, if you're not around, who's going to hold your kids? And that, yeah. re- that really got me motivated. You know what I'm saying? Like, who's going to hold your kids if you don't? Yeah. And uh, that, that, that really got me motivated. Uh, we're going to take it. And, again, we're going to play this back and forth, back and forth. We're going to talk about real life, but we're also going to talk about the faith aspect, the church aspect as well. First Corinthians chapter 6. I want to read just a couple of verses to you right here. It's 19 and 20. And we're going to go from the, from, the, from the faith side of it really quick. It says, Have you forgotten that your body is now the sacred temple of the Spirit of holiness who lives in you? 
You don't belong to yourself any longer. For the gift of God, the Holy Spirit lives inside your sanctuary, your body. You were God's expensive purchase, paid for with the tears of blood. So by all means, then, use your body to bring glory to God. Use your body to bring glory to God. Nick, we're hitting it over to you, man. How important is it? Uh, you know, we just talked to Alex about man about it. he had to, he decided he made a change, man, because he you know he was tired of living the way he was. How important is it for us, man, to get sick and tired of being sick and tired as, as Christians sometimes, right? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, even in the physical realm, if anybody's been keeping up with this podcast, knows that I'm not the healthiest person. <laughs> oh, goodness, world, right? I'm glad you right, spoke yeah, to the well, elephant yeah. in the room. We'll, we'll you know? get it out there. We'll get it out there and talk about it a little bit. But, um, you know, I, I think, you know, just, you know, as as we kind of walked into this new year, you know, I was kind of in the mindset of, you know, I'm, I'm literally sick and tired of being sick and tired. Right. Um, and so, you know, with that, I've tried to approach just different uh, different ways to do my life you know, yeah. you know I've, I've been to the gym twice now and you know two Woo! weeks i know it's, it's we're getting somewhere that's a that's almost a habit it's right. almost know, a routine we're getting somewhere yes that's sir. The point right there starting small getting uh getting bigger as we go and building right. into something awesome but right um you know my goal you know i said i was i was probably actually physically sick probably about six months last year yeah <laughs> so yeah. my goal is to at least be sick four months this year hey, uh that's but you know a, that's we're, a trend. We're gonna, exactly we're gonna we're gonna keep moving forward but you know it, it is important because you know if you are somebody who doesn't really pay that close of attention to what you do, what you put in your body, you know, how you live your life, it can come back to bite you. And it does a lot of different people. You know, we were talking before we started recording about like the major main causes of death in the world. Right. We're going we're gonna to get to those, but go ahead. And a lot of those are caused by people really, you know, and again, you, you can't help genetics sometimes. You can't help certain things, but, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of that is um, kind of accelerated uh, by the, the different kind of habits that we form, the right. food that we eat, the right. things that we drink. All kinds of different things have a very big impact on our body, you know. So it's important to not, you know, treat your body. You know, again, as as the scripture was saying here, you know, our body is to be treated as a temple because it's literally the house of God. You know, Jesus resides within us as a Christian, um, and so you know, we we shouldn't let we shouldn't be dumping you know horrible things into our body on a constant basis. To me, that's kind of like if you walked into a church building and saw you know raccoons walking around with like trash and you know like all kinds of you know nasty stuff you know written yeah. you know, like ta- or, uh, graffitied on the walls, right? Um, you know, just you know if you, you wouldn't feel. Church, Safe for sure. Yeah, exactly. You know, you, you walk into that church building, you expect to see, you know, at least some semblance of a business or something, you know, right, something that looks right. a little bit more respectable. Right. Uh, but, you know, again, yeah, and that's not the case everywhere. It depends on where you go in the world. Uh, but, you know, my main point is that, you know, you have to be careful what you're putting in because really, ultimately, what you put in, as the scripture says, what you put in is what you give out. Right. Um, so if you're putting junk in your body, you're going to get trashy results. Yeah, you said a word right there that I think really keyed with me was stress. And, and and we'll talk again. We're going to go back and forth here. Alex, man, how, you know, talk about stress just for a second. As far as we know, we know from experience and, and I, I, even I myself know this, that the more that you add on to your body, you know, weight wise, uh, you know, uh, 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 if you're like Nick said, if you're putting the wrong food into your system, if you're drinking the wrong stuff, if you're focused on the wrong stuff, how much of a stress can that put on your joints? How much of a stress can that put on your uh, on your heart, on your lungs, on your organs? Like how, like it's it's crazy, right? Yeah, I mean it's gonna. I mean it's stressing your whole body. I mean your joints. I can't remember what the uh, numbers are, but like just an extra ten pounds puts so much more pressure on your joints. Yeah, right. And and you think about that, like how, like, you know, you start to put more pressure on your joints and your knees are aching and your back's aching and your ankles are aching. And, you know, and it's like before long, you become immobile or, or a lot less flexible or whatever the case is. And, you You'll know, be looking like those guys off Wally. You remember that? Like uh, yes. Walking, you know, like yes. I know. Right. Like, like yeah, pounds. absolutely. And it's like, you know, you start doing stuff like that. And before you know it, it's almost like your zeal for life goes away too. On top of that, uh, you know, so so that's the stress aspect and the physical side of it, Nick. But you know, we come into we come into church every Sunday, uh, and we're supposed to eliminate stress, right? Like you know, we come in, we sit down, and we worship Jesus, and we're supposed to be putting our our you know our our sins and our uh, burdens. burdens and yeah, and I mean our fights or whatever on the altar, man. And you know, let's talk about that just for a second about how stress in the spiritual side of things, man, can literally mess up your relationship with Jesus so much because you're not giving it to Him and you're not really letting Him have control. But it can mess you up so bad that like sometimes you don't even feel like worshiping, giving, 
uh, praying or even showing up to church, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, if you hold on to things, you know, like, you know, ha- you know, how am I going to financially make it in this world? How am I going to physically make it in this world? You yeah. know, I don't know how to provide for my family. I don't know how to, you know, make it one more day. You know, there's so many different things that we struggle with on a daily basis. And if we're not coming into church, if we're not giving that or offloading that to someone or something, if we carry that stuff around for a long time, it's going to fester and it's going to grow and it's going to infect us. Right. Um, you know, I, I talked to kids before about, you know, if you, uh, deal with like depression, anxiety, anger, fear, if you deal with that kind of stuff and the way you deal with it is by pushing it down and not letting it out and not talking to someone about it, that stuff is going to transform you on the outside. You're going to be a you know, horribly pessimistic, negative person. Don't look at me when I say that, uh, but we're going to, you're going to be a horribly <laughs> right. negative, you know, pessimistic we're person. Working, right? We're working now. We're getting you yeah, there, we're getting man. There. We're getting you we're there. We're getting there. But you know, it's just like, you know, I've talked to the kids before that are, you know, afraid to talk to their parents about stuff or afraid to get certain things off their chest because of their, you know, their fear, they fear judgment or they fear ridicule or they fear this, that, or the other. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I let them know because, you know, from experience, I know what it feels like to really just hold that stuff in, you know, to hold that stress in. In, to hold those anxieties in, yeah. to not talk about it, it really puts right. you in a lonely place, and that's where a lot of addicts are formed out of. Is that they, you know, they have that feeling that they were afraid of getting out, and so they do different things to try and push uh-huh. that feeling down even deeper. Right. Um, but you know, again, it's, it's very important to to relinquish those things to somebody somehow. You know, again, if therapy is your thing, therapy is your thing. If Jesus is your thing, Jesus is your thing, and Jesus is the best thing. Right. Um, but you know, there there are things that you need to do to make sure that you are offloading those problems that you're dealing with. Yeah, I like that you said uh, right there. You know you were talking about i guess maybe people feeling comfortable enough to be able to do that uh and i think one of the one of the huge things uh let's go back to the physical side of it just for a second but one of the huge things i think sometimes is is that people are not comfortable in their own skin anymore you know it's uh we have a lot of body image issues we have things like that going on and and you know it's it's hard and even with myself you know uh I, you know, just speaking from personal experience, man, sometimes I'll still put on like a shirt or a pair of pants or something like that. And I'm like, ah, it just doesn't look good, you know, whatever. And then it's like, you begin to, you know, you begin to shame yourself all over again, you know? And it's like, you want to, you want to get to a point of where you feel comfortable with yourself, but at the same point in time, you, you still want to work on yourself as well, you know? And it's like, uh, where, where do you think, uh, where do you think Alex in the physical side of things, where do where do you really feel like that you get to a point of where you're, Let's just say comfortable, like you know, but you still, you know, you're still trying to progress and still trying to work a little bit towards uh, maybe that image or that weight or that whatever you're looking for as far as personal health. Well, like um, I guess, Holly, I mean Hollywood, of course, everybody's got like a six pack, got huge biceps, uh, all this stuff, right? But I mean. I don't know what point. So if I move to Hollywood, I can have that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm on my way. I'm ticket tickets punched tomorrow. You know, sold your soul to the devil. Yeah. Like <laughs> so I don't know. Like personally, like I want to still get better. I mean, it, it, you are what you eat. Right. That's my thing now. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to change what I'm eating because I mean, you can exercise all you want, but you can only do so much with exercise. You got to work on your diet. Too. Yeah, that's what uh, I heard a guy say. You can't outrun your fork. Uh, yeah. And that's just. I mean, it's a true statement. It's a true statement, but. So, so you know, Alex is saying, Nick, that you got to watch what you put in your body. If, you, yep. if you're going to be healthy, if you're going to reach a pinnacle of where you feel good about, you've got to watch what you put in your body. So on the flip side of that, to go to spiritually speaking, I mean, how important is it? And I've heard you talk about this before, about what is the importance of what you put in your body, what you're watching, what you're listening to, what you're, uh, you know, the people you hang around, you know, the, the the stuff you see. Like, how important is it that if you want to guard your heart, uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit here in just a second, but, you know, and guarding your temple from the inside, like, how important is it to guard what you go through or what you see yeah and i will get philosophical for just two seconds here but uh there was a i think i I, I want to say a philosopher i can't remember the exact title of this person but uh their name was Rene descartes uh, or descartes something like that anyway their their quote that has always stuck with me for so long is i think therefore i am right Um, and that is something that has stuck with me for a long time and i've been able to apply that you know spiritually as well because you know whoever you think you are is who you are going to be right um you know i if you you know, want to sit there and you, you want to be disciplined enough to, you know, join the Navy SEALs, you know, if that's your goal and you have that mindset for the rest of your life, you know, you can push towards that goal and reach that goal. David Goggins, um, man. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And shout out somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I, I think, you know, bringing that back again, just a little bit, understanding that, 
you know what you are you know what you put in what you listen to what you, who you spend your time around uh you know what you spend your time doing uh-huh. all of that stuff affects you directly and you may not realize it you know we, you may just go about your day doing these things and you won't notice you know we, we talk about how habits are small and they may seem insignificant at first but eventually they lead to bigger and badder things right um you know the same thing applies to bad things you know if we are spending our time and listening to bad things doing bad things you know again depends on your definition of bad things but right you know if you're listening to something that makes you feel negative something that makes you feel angry or irritated or anxious or whatever it may be, you know, you can spend your time around that stuff and not realize the damage that it's actually doing to your body. Right. You know, you can eat, you know, one McChicken every day, you know, from McDonald's and not feel the immediate impact. But over right. a couple of months, you're going to feel something wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, if you are spending all of your time listening to people being hateful and yelling and cussing and doing stupid stuff and talking about stupid stuff, you're going to develop an, an anger and a frustration with the yeah. world just because you're listening to other people that way. Right. And then you're going to come into church in here and just drop that on everybody. Body, mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You know. Yeah. And I heard it said once before that you know, like this was back when I used to work at McDonald's. Um. You know, they said that you know you don't take your problems to work with you. You know, if you've done with something, if you've dealt with something, experienced something, you know, you don't want to bring that in with you. Now there is a flip side of that when it comes to you know church. You know, you do want to bring that stuff with you, but you don't want to take it out on somebody else. Good point. Um. You want you know point. you want to take it out and deal with it, right. but you don't want to take it out on someone else. If you've had a horrible, no good, very bad week, like we talked about a couple times before, right. you know, if people have sucked in your life this whole week. Yeah. And you're just having a horrible, horrible time. You know, you don't need to go to church and, you know, just look at someone with a mean stare or ignore people all the time. Or, you know, you look just you want to make sure that you're going there because church, you know, we've talked about this before. Church should be seen as a hospital. You right. know, it should be somewhere where people go to get better, where they can relinquish their fears, relinquish their anxieties, relinquish their frustrations and experience God's grace, mercy and forgiveness through the people in the congregation. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, the, it is so, so important to make sure you're paying attention. You're taking inventory of what you're listening to what you're eating, the people you're spending your time around. Yeah. You know, I, I promise you, promise you, promise you, if you're spending every night at the bar, every night getting drunk, you are not going to have the successful life that you could possibly have. Right. It's not going to happen right. because those people are drowning their sorrows. Alcohol is a natural depressant. Yeah. That is something that's going to ruin your life, even if you don't think that it will. Right. Um, you know, and it, it comes with anything, you know, cigarettes, you know, that stuff is going to, you know, I, I taught, you know, health education for a little bit about drugs and, you know, that kind of stuff. The the things that these these things do to your body is just insane. Right. You know, the, the damage it can do over time, the toxins, the chemicals, all this stuff damages your lungs, your organs, your brain, all this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's very, very important that you're very, very careful about what you're putting in, what you're allowing into your ears. You know, if you're someone who struggles with, you know, pornography, then maybe you shouldn't be watching movies with nudity in it. Right. You know, don't put yourselves in situations that you're weak in. You know, if you're weak and struggling financially, don't go to a, you know, somewhere that's gambling. Yeah, involved. that's what like, I was going to say. Yeah, like if, you're, yeah. if you struggle financially, don't go where you could possibly gamble your money away don't go to your favorite store don't go to the mall yeah you know you have to avoid those situations avoid those people who are going to push you down and you know basically ruin the vision you have for yourself and not only the vision you have for yourself but the vision god has for you right and so you know let's hit let's hit the heart right here because you know as we alluded to in the you know maybe in the start of the conversation we were going to talk a little bit about the heart and about causes of death and you know, the very first thing that comes that like the number one cause of death is heart disease, you know, is heart disease. And, and this is according to the CDC. And I don't know what year this is from. I mean, I typed in 2022, so I'm hoping it was 2022. Uh, but nonetheless, it said 696,962 deaths, you know, just just to heart disease. And so, like, you know, how, how important is it? Because, I mean, our heart is the main source of our of our body. You know, if the heart is not pumping, uh, you know, we've got a problem. So, uh, you know, it, uh, Alex, let's talk about, you know, just the heart process, man. And it's like, uh, you know, Nick was talking about things, putting things in, getting things out, things like that, you know. Uh, but, you know, your heart is probably, you know, quote unquote, uh, probably the, you know, most important, uh, organ that you, I, I get it. You know, we need the organs. I get that. But I mean, like, again, if you're not pumping, hey, you're not living. So arguably probably the most important organ that we have in our body. Uh, and, and what should we do from a health aspect as far as physically wise, you know, like what should we be doing to, to guard that heart and to make it as strong as what we can? Well, I mean, I mean, of course, so eating healthy, but I mean, you need to be getting up your heart rate. Right. I mean, um, at least two or three times a week. Yeah. Uh, if not more, for uh, moderate exercise yeah, and things yeah, like moderate that. Moderate exercise, walking, uh, jogging, um, 
just, I mean, 20 minutes a day or whatever. Right, right. Yeah, and I mean, like, drinking water, things like that. I mean, like, you know, water is so important to people. I just got on a dive the other day to just talk about or just read about water and just to see how many, like, actual benefits water has. And it's insane to see, like, you know, about keeping your system flushed out and keeping toxins flushed out of your system. And, you know, like, uh, it, it could even, like, help your joints out. And, I mean, there's so much different stuff that just drinking water can do for your life but you know what hey you know what jesus said he said hey you come to me and you will thirst no more nick i'm I'm just throwing all kinds of bible stuff in here too right and so let's throw like let's talk about that just for a second too about hey like you know drinking water very important man uh and obviously according to the cdc we need to do a heck of a better job of taking care of our hearts so you know if drinking water is going to help that in the physical and jesus says you know hey you will thirst no more if you come to me in the spiritual uh you know then i I feel like that's one of the best ways we can take care of our heart is whenever we go to him because he is that water he is that bread he is that portion that we need right yeah i mean he is the only one who can clearly and you know concisely and precisely precisely however you want to say that uh clean and wash out our heart you know right. all the the evil the sin the disturbances the fears and anxieties you know all that you know metaphorical sense of you know what your heart is and what it can do you know all that's all those things can only be washed away by the blood of jesus you know understanding that you know he is you know the, you know if, if if we come to him we will thirst no more that means right. all the desires and the pains and the things that we think we need we don't need anymore right. because he is going to take care of us he's going to provide for us you know he's going to be there for us you know he is jehovah jireh you know, he is the provider. He is Jehovah Rapha, the healer. You know, if we want to come to him for anything, you know, he is the one that's going to take care of us and help us and heal us. Right. Absolutely, man. And I, I agree a thousand percent. And I mean, that's why it's so important to understand that, you know, your heart, man, guard your heart, you know, take care of your temple, things like that. Alex, if you was to meet somebody uh, that was in your place five years ago, what would be the advice that you would give them that you would look at them and say, Hey, look, like, uh, you know, we need to get on the right track, uh, you know, or what, what, what do you think you could say to them to motivate them to get them going in the right direction? Um, to motivate them. I mean, I mean, it depends on where they're at in their life, of course. I right, mean, what, right. Where they're at, but right. Uh, um, so let's just say their mindset is, and, and we deal with this all the time. I mean, in physically, spiritually, we get people who say, "I want to change, I want to change, I want to change," but then when it comes down to change, it they don't want to change. They don't want to put in the work to change, right? Mm-hmm. And so I guess maybe the million dollar question is: is you know what do we do as far as people who say that they have the mindset to want to change? Where, where do we kind of start with them in the physical sense? Where do we start with them uh, and, and get them maybe going in the right direction, you know? I mean, start with, uh, I mean, what you're eating, what you're putting into your body, and then uh, working out, uh, exercising uh, one to two days a week, starting out, and then build on that. Right. I mean, you gotta you got to start a routine, form a habit, and then stay dedicated to it. Right. And that's big. Uh, and, and I was going to say, like, small, small uh, commitments or instances can lead to big victories. Like, that's where, like, I, I feel like that's where, like, we start small blocks and we work our way up. But like you said, yeah. you, 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 you start a routine, you form a habit, and then you kind of build on that. And I yeah. like that because that's where, I mean, that's honestly it. And, and I think so many people set up themselves for failure because uh, I was talking to a lady the other day, and, you know, we were talking about weight loss, and her goal was like, you know, uh, 60, 70 pounds, something like that, you know. And you're not going to accomplish that in one day. You're not going to accomplish that in a week, you know. Uh, it's going to take some time to get there, and you're going to have to form small habits uh, in order to see some big things happen like that. And, you know, like, so, so Nick, let's go with that aspect of, of, the, uh, of the faith side of it. It's like... Uh, you know, if somebody's never been to church, I think, man, I think a goal just starting out, if you've never been to church, hey, let's try one Sunday a month. You know what I'm saying? Two Sundays a month, three Sundays a month. You know, like you start small things. Like somebody who's never been to church, you don't just drag them in, bring them up front, you know, and, uh, you know, start putting them on the stage to preach. I mean, it just doesn't work like that. And, and so in instances where I feel like we get people better, like Alex is talking about getting people better physically, you know, you form that small routine, you get that habit going. 
then you build off that. You know, what do we do, uh, spiritually speaking, you think, as far as, like, just building people up, man, and, and getting them in a routine, a good routine? Yeah, and I mean, you know, number one, I think the, the number one thing that most people struggle with is perfectionism when it comes to these types of things. You know, they, they want to do, they want to be 100%. If they can't be 100%, then they're not going to do it. You know, I, I think we get so stuck, you know, we talk about, you know, before how, you know, all these New Year's resolutions, how they fail because people set a goal for themselves, like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to lose 70 pounds right. this year. That's huge. Yeah. You know, if, if you are, if, even if that person loses 10 pounds, they're going to see it as a failure because their goal was 70 pounds. Right. And so, you know, sometimes it's best that we make a goal that is easy, something that's easy, something that's possible, something that's realistic, something that is even attractive. You know, we want to make it something that that person can actually physically accomplish because when you physically accomplish something, when you see something tangible in your hands, you see yeah. tangible success, right. that is going to motivate you to go further and faster and higher. Right. You know, so, you know, somebody who's never been to church before, somebody who's wanting to try it out, maybe who's, you know, planted that idea, you know, I say, hey, I wouldn't mind going. It's been a while. You know, maybe I'll think about it, something like that. You know, again, if you just be like, look, man, you know, you can go or, you know, ma'am, whatever you want to say, you go one Sunday out of the month, you know, let me find a, a one of the best Sundays, you know, pick a day that even I could come drive you. Right. You know, eliminate right. all the excuses yeah, that you yeah, can yeah. for this person to really get them because, you know, I promise you, you know, like I, I had a friend who every time, you know, I would invite him to church every time they'd be like, yes, I'm coming. I'm coming. It's great. I'm going. I'm going. I'll be there. Trust me. I'll be there. The morning of they get sick. Right. You know, and, and I told people this, you know, I told him this. I said, I promise you that sickness will go away the moment you walk in those church doors. Yeah, yeah. Because what that is, is that's anxiety and that's the devil trying to keep you from coming in that right, church. Right. Because that's where you need to be. That's where you want to be. And he knows that he's scared and he's going to attack you. For right. It. Absolutely. So you have to be there as a spiritual guide in a sense to get that person through these doors, even that first time. And that's enough sometimes to just, just keep that person coming, keep them going, keep them coming because that first time is this hardest thing for some people to do. Right. You know, when I decided to go to the gym, that first time was a very difficult decision. You, know, you wake up like, God, I got to go. Right. You just have to have the discipline to do it. Yeah. And again, sometimes it's helpful to have somebody in your corner to say, Hey, I will literally be at your door knocking at this time to right. come bring you to church. Right. Right. Sometimes we have to be that person for people. And we've kind of lost that, I think, you know, yeah. as far as evangelism has gone right you know, we've lost that going door to door and you know all that kind of stuff um but you know sometimes that is necessary if we want to build the kingdom of god you know we we're sitting here sometimes i think you know just expecting people to walk in the doors without doing the steps to bring them in you right know, we you know we put things out on facebook on youtube on the podcast we put things you know out wherever you know wherever that we're doing things you know we put these little feelers out to get people you know that they'll see it maybe they'll get hooked and come in one day yeah. um, but you know we we don't do the work sometimes it takes to be like hey you come into you come this Sunday, you come in this Sunday, you come in this Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, sometimes it takes that persistence on even our part, you know, as, as spiritual leaders to be like, hey, you know, let's let's do this. You know, let me how can I make this easy for you? How can I right. make church attractive for you? Right. How can I make this an experience you want to do, you want to accomplish, and you want to, you know, keep going at and keep going for um, and all that kind of stuff. So it is important, you know, to help that person see that, you know, you don't have to be perfect to come into church. You know, you can miss uh, a Sunday or two, you know, but the, you know, again, the the point is progress, not perfection. Right. You know, if, if you were never going to church for one year and you start going once a month, that's progress. That's, that's progress. awesome. Right. That is awesome. That's yeah. something worthy of being celebrated. Right. You yeah. know, but, you know, and then if you're going to church, you know, two Sundays a month, but you're still not going full time, you know, I wish we go full time. I just can't seem to make it in. Hey, Last year you were only yeah. one Sunday right. a month. Right, like, yeah. you're, you're booking. You're making it. You're yeah, doing, yeah. You're, you're doing great in the right things. direction. Right. And you know, eventually it's going to be in God's hands. You know, I mean, to to take care of that person and to deal with them and you know, move them forward and all that kind of stuff. Right. But we do still have to play our part in helping those people achieve and uh, motivate those people to get where they're wanting to go. Right, and that's where uh, you know I was going to talk really quick about. I, I think we've and we've talked about this in church about how we we are so caught up on making Christians that we forget to make disciples, and you know it's like hey we'll get them saved and then hey here you go you know like that's our job you know then you, hey just whatever disciple you turn into whatever, uh and and that's where it really becomes hands on and that's where like you said having good people in your corner uh because you know I mean Alex I'm sure you were motivated you know to get better but there's you know there's also people holding you accountable as well you know hey you coming yeah. to the gym hey you showing up hey you doing this stuff like you know there's people pushing you trying to make you better uh and so like i want to hit on this topic really quick uh you know it's, i, I want to talk about uh eliminating excuses really quick this is this is we're going to uh, shut it down right here after this but let's talk about eliminating excuses alex about how like 
uh, you know, excuses are huge, man. Uh, you know, it's like, uh, uh, I want to lose weight. Let's, let's just talk again physical for a second. I want to lose weight, but every time I open up the cabinet, hey, Oreos are in there. Uh, you know, I, I want to, I want to, I want to look better, but, you know, uh, I eat McDonald's three times a day. You know, it's like there's, it, you know, it, we have, what can we do to eliminate the excuses to a point of where it's like, you know what, like your your mind is set, your feet are set, your heart is set, and we're going to make this happen. Because again, it says, honor God with our bodies. And one of the big things for me, and then I'll let you talk, <laughs> one of the big things for me was, was I could not stand on that stage being uncontrollably out of control of my life uh, in the physical sense. And tell people and teach people about discipline. I couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. You know, I had to look at myself and be like, are you kidding me? Like, you're telling people they need to be disciplined, and you're slamming a number one with a large sweet tea at 10 o'clock at night every night. That is not discipline. You know, that is that. And, and I was killing myself, you know. Uh, but I also had excuses. You know, oh, man, it, you know, it was, it, uh, didn't cook supper. It was easy to get to, whatever. How can we eliminate excuses, man, to where we get our focus right and we get on the right track and we just go? I mean, the key is to start somewhere and build on it. So, like right. you just said, a uh, number one with a uh, large sweet tea. So, make that a large water. Um, so, I, I can still go to McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, Pro- I mean, progress, not perfection. Progress. Yeah. There we yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. You got to start somewhere. Uh, I mean, if you're eating uh, fast food five times a week, drop it to four times a week. Right. Uh, and start. Yeah. Yeah. So, just start I mean, small. Yeah. Start somewhere. Go into the gym. I mean, if it, or going for a walk, start with going for a walk before you go to the gym. Right. Um, Just do something and build on it. Yeah. Um, I don't know how, I mean, the excuse is, is hard to, um, hard to know what your excuse is, but how do you eliminate it? Yeah. It's just, I mean, you got to start somewhere. Right. Right. You think accountability is a huge thing? Like as far as surrounding yourself with people, uh, you know, I mean, let's just be honest. Like, you know, if you want to get healthy, you're not going to be around a bunch of people that are not healthy. Right. I mean, if you want to get healthy, you got to, you got to get around accountable people who have been there and put in the work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's like where the going to the gym most people at the gym are going to be healthier than people that's not going to the gym. Right. So, I mean, start there. Uh, I mean, start uh, building, trying to get your friends to do what you're doing. Right. Yeah. And go absolutely. on that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Nick, how do we eliminate excuses, man, in the church where it's like, uh, you know, uh, uh, where we where we focus on just growing, man, and we focus on getting better as Christians every single day? How do we do that? Yeah, I mean, because again, I know we've we've talked so many times about being distracted even by like numbers. You know, I want a certain amount of people to download. I want a certain amount of people to walk in the church doors. I want a certain amount of people to like the page or share the page or do right. you know, all these different things. You know that we we may talk about on a basis, but you know if we do the small things, eventually we're going to see the big change. Right. You know, like if we're we're coming in here and we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. You know, we're praying for people. We're praising God. We're you know we're making disciples. We're doing all these things that we're supposed to be doing. You know what the Bible what. Jesus Jesus tells us that we need to do. If we're doing these things, then God is going to provide the rest, you know, and we've talked about that time and time again, you know, if we're, if we show that we are able to be responsible over a small amount where, you know, he will give us responsibility over more. Right. And so, you know, we need to make sure that we're responsible over those small things before we're ever gifted with those bigger things. Um, you know, and as I was, you know, as you were saying about this, I was thinking about a book that I read not too long ago called Atomic Habits. Um, and it was talking about how to break a bad habit, you know, how to eliminate excuses basically. Um, and one of the first laws was, I mean, this is uh, by James Clear, I believe I'm taught Atomic Habits. Um, he says the first one to do is to make it invisible. So like you were talking about, you know, if you're trying to diet and you open up that cabinet and there's Oreos right there, right. Eliminate those Oreos, get rid of them, throw them away. If you're a cigarette smoker and you want to stop smoking, Get rid of those triggers. Yeah. You know, if that's if you see something or you're in an environment that basically triggers that need to smoke, you need to eliminate, avoid those situations, and eliminate that. Uh, you want to make it unattractive. You know, whenever you think about smoking, look up pictures of people with horrible lungs, people who have lost their teeth, people who are yeah. sickly, and all this right. kind of stuff. If you were, you know, wanting to go grab a snack, look at pictures of somebody. Well, go watch my six hundred pound life. Right? <laughs> you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go watch something like that. A thousand wanna, pound sister yeah, or exactly, something like that. I think exactly, they got that right? too. But, yeah, and if you want to, you know, if you want to go. You know, stop spending so much money at the mall. You know, watch hoarders or something. Right. You know, like find something that's going to make that habit of yours unattractive, so you can stop using that as an excuse, and you can stop. You know, 
feeding into that bad habit. Uh, you also want to make it difficult. You want to, you know, basically increase the number of steps between you and that bad habit, you know, yeah. increase the number of steps between you and that excuse, eliminate that excuse in that way. Um, you know, have people that are going to hold you accountable. You know, like you were saying, that's huge. You know, you want people that you're like, uh, you know, I, I could have just worked out. I could have said, I'm going to work out once a week in the basement. You know, yeah. I could have used the treadmill that's down there. I could have used the weights that are down there. But I knew that if I didn't have someone keeping me accountable, I wasn't going to do it. If I didn't have Absolutely. to get up and drive all the way to E-Town to go to the gym with my cousin who I knew was going to keep me accountable, yeah. I wouldn't be working out every week. Right. You know, you want to put somebody in your life, you want to put people in your life, situations around you that are going to motivate you to do what you want to do and are going to eliminate those excuses. You also want to make it unsatisfying, um, you know. So you want to basically say, you know, that this thing that I'm doing is no longer pleasing me anymore. You know, this thing that I'm doing is no longer making me happy. You know, these this this excuse I have is actually making me unhappier. Right. Um, you know, and so you want to you just want to find those things that are going to help push you away from your bad habits, push you away from your excuses, and move you closer towards the goal that you're trying to achieve. Move you closer to a healthier life, physically, spiritually, fi- uh, financially, emotionally, right. you know, all the aspects of life. You want to eliminate the excuses. You want to eliminate the bad habits that you've created for so long. Progress, not perfection. You know, you're not going to fix these problems overnight. It's not going to happen. Pending some miracle from God, it's not going to happen. You know, right. it's going to take some progress. Like you're saying, you know, if you order a number one from McDonald's with a sweet tea, order it with the water next time. Yeah. Um, you know, instead of getting a ten piece nugget, get a six piece nugget. Right. Instead of getting a large fry, get a medium fry. You know, you slowly work your way down from that. You know, that's what I'm doing with energy drinks and soda, trying to eliminate that from my life. So I, I told myself this year, every time I drink an energy drink, every time I drink a soda, I have to drink two bottles of water with that, at least yeah. thirty two ounces of water. I can give you some yeah, stuff. Right. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, you know, he's trying to sell it to me in the middle of the podcast. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, but, you know, just again, you know, understand that you have to, you know, eliminate things. You have to have somebody to hold you accountable. You have to make things look unattractive and you have to make the good things look attractive. All these sorts of different things that you have to do in order to better yourself in all the different aspects of life. Absolutely. Sounds great. So, you know, hopefully something was said uh, and done, even even from the, you know, the physical or the spiritual aspect here, as we have talked about. Guard your heart, build your temple, you know, like, uh, or guard your temple, I guess I should say. Uh, but, uh, you know, if, if you're, if you're a person out there struggling physically tonight, right now, or whenever you might read this, it's, uh, or hear this, I'm sorry, it's up to you, you know, reach out to us some way, somehow, whether it's through email, whether it's through, you know, the church or whatever, uh, and we can help you, you know, and if it's, if it's spiritual, if you're struggling in that spiritual, just to take the next step, whatever it is, maybe to even come to church. You know, there's a thousand different ways you can connect with us, Facebook and YouTube, or you can reach out to us. Heck, we'll even come sit down in your house with you and, and talk to you and minister to you, just whatever. You know, like we just want people to take that next step to get better and to, uh, you know, to build better as well. So, uh, you know, say thank you so much, Alex, uh, for joining us tonight and kind of bringing your perspective on it, man. Yep, thank you. There we go. Yeah, and so, uh, you know, thank you for getting in with us, man. And, and, and again, we thank you guys so much for downloading the podcast and for supporting. And, uh, you know, just keep doing your thing. We love you so much. And uh, we'll be back again next week. Be blessed. We love you. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, go. Thank you to everyone for listening to the People Suck But Love Them Anyways podcast. As always, you can check us out on Facebook at Fruition Church, YouTube at Fruition Church of Hodgenville, and check out our website at www.fruitionchurchky.org. Remember, don't suck and love people. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, go.